Stutz, S-T-U-T-Z, is a documentary style film directed by and starring Jonah Hill, as well as the psychiatrist Phil Stutz. And here's the official synopsis. Phil Stutz is one of the world's leading psychiatrists. He's helped countless patients over 40 years, including world-class creatives and business leaders, and among them, many therapy skeptics. Directed by friend and patient Jonah Hill, the film explores Stutz's life and walks the viewer through his signature visualization exercises, the tools. My brother told me about this doc and I had seen it on my feed, but I just saw the name and I didn't go into it or anything. So when he mentioned that, I decided to, to check it out. And when I did, I made the connection of what it was and that it was a doc about Phil Stutz. Now, many years ago, I read this book, which I'm holding in my hand right now as I speak to you guys, called The Tools, written by Phil Stutz and a patient of his, actually, if I remember correctly, named Barry Michaels. And the book, again, is called The Tools, and I'll link to it in the episode notes. And similar to this doc, it's, you know, the patient sharing what he's learned from Phil Stutz. And then the book is broken down into... Like the patient speaking about one of his experiences and then Phil Stutz breaking down the tool that he introduced to the patient to help him deal with, you know, X, Y, Z situation. It's a very, very good read. And I heard of it, I'm sure, through a podcast, which I can't credit uh, because I don't remember. It might have actually been now now that I say it out loud, the uh, Something Something Mental Health podcast, which is actually where and it, it was a podcast hosted by a comic, but he focused on like mental health and shared a lot of his experiences with with going to therapy and stuff like that. And it's actually where I got the idea to create the Spun Today questionnaire that I have on my website right now, free and available for anybody to fill out and be featured on a future episode of the podcast, spuntoday.com forward slash questionnaire, because he did questionnaires of a different type of content on, on his show. But yeah, I read the book. I loved it. I was like all about it while, you know, I was, I was reading it. And while like the lessons resonated with me for a bit after reading the book, but like most things after a while, it's like out of sight, out of mind. You stop implementing stuff that you learned, stop thinking about it, and it essentially stops helping. So being able to revisit some of the ideas from the book in this doc, as well as others and getting to actually like visually see Phil Studs and learn more about his life and his background. And the way that he and Jonah put this together was was uh, an absolute treat. And it also made me think that I should be revisiting and rereading things like this that resonated with me in an attempt to keep the lessons going and implement the benef- beneficial aspects of it in, into my life. And I do that with certain writing books that I revisit or podcast episodes and clips and stuff like that. But it's definitely something that I want to do more of. But anyway, back to when I first read the book, I remember distinctly being, you know, halfway or three quarters through the book and I was going to the stand, the comedy club, which is on East 16th or 15th Street in the city. And I was going with my then girl, now wife, and I was going specifically to see Ari Shafir because I knew he was he was going to be doing a set that night. And on the way, I was telling her about this book and one of the tools which has always uh, stuck with me. I forget the name of, but essentially what it is is to picture yourself on your deathbed whenever you're confronted with, you know, like a scary decision that you have to make or something that you're wrestling with. Fast forward and picture yourself in your deathbed. And from that perspective, think back to this moment that is giving you the cognitive dissonance and ask yourself, what would you and your deathbed wish that the you now would have done and then use that to catapult you in the direction of where it is that you in the future would have wished you would have done for example and i'm very much so paraphrasing and i remember being there watching the comedy show with my wife having a good time seeing ari perform his you know workout material for like 15 20 minutes and then the stand you know it's you know, you have the, the comedy club and then behind the curtain, you have the bar that where you like come in from. And then Ari leaves. He's 
goes like towards the bar behind the curtain and then the next comic comes up and i'm to like go just like say what's up to ari maybe get a picture with him or something like that and i've told you guys in the past if you listen to this podcast that you know ari's one of my favorite comics i listened to skeptic tank for years etc cetera, etc cetera. so i was like fanboying out but me normally i would never even think about being like out of my comfort zone in that way like me just being in the comedy club in and of itself is like a big event you know what i mean let alone you know put myself out there like that but then because i had been reading this book and because i had just had the conversation on my way to the comedy club with my girl i in that moment thought about the very practical tool which again the book the tools is like filled with a handful of these like really practical you could apply them immediately type tools the way that phil stutz developed them and and breaks them down i remember asking myself would you and your deathbed wish that you had would at least have gone up to ari and said what's up or what you would normally do stay where you're at enjoy the rest of the comedy show then go home and regret not saying anything and that for whatever reason gave me the confidence or the push or whatever you want to call it to actually go to the bar and say what's up to ari and it was funny because i first i asked the waitress i was like hey um the comic that was just on uh ari shafir can i like buy him a drink can you like give him a drink and put it on my tab or something like that so i'm like we enjoyed the show something like that and she kind of looks at me she's kind of like um the comics drink for free but he's over there sitting in the bar if you, you want to go like she kind of looked at me like i'm an idiot <laughs> Then I wind up going to the bar, which is fairly empty because mostly everybody is there, you know, in the comedy club, obviously. And Ari's there and he's there with, I remember, Chris Gethard, another comic who's very funny, that I had heard on that mental illness podcast, actually, as like a guest, I believe. Damn, that's crazy. That came full circle. But yeah, he's there. Ari's there speaking with him, like at the end of the bar. And I kind of like very awkwardly i I like walk towards them but i'm just like standing kind of like in the middle of the bar like looking in their direction in retrospect they were probably like what the fuck is this creepy guy (laughs) like what's going on and then i i'm standing there for so long that i kind of notice ari notice me and kind of have that like uh what's this guy you know reaction not in a like douchey way but just kind of like in an all you know i'm making the scene awkward right but he continues the conversation with Chris and I kind of give him like a head nod and he like head nods me back. And then I'm like, all right, fuck it. I, now I, I have to go. And I walk the rest of the way towards them. And I forget what I told Ari, but it was like something to the effect of, hey, I'm, I'm a fan of Skeptic Tank. Thought you guys were really funny. Um, can I uh, buy you guys a drink or something like that? And they were like, no, you know, we're good. You know, thanks, whatever. It was like nice. And then I think they... Ari even said, you know, we get drinks free here or something like that. And I was like, all right, cool. And I kind of like stood there for a couple more seconds and like thanked them and like shook their hands. And I didn't, I didn't like ask for a picture or anything. It was already like weird and awkward enough. But I just remember them both being nice. But I was also conscious of them probably being as awkward as I felt. And since we weren't having a drink together, it didn't really feel like the right vibe to just stay standing there for example <laughs> so i went back finished watching the rest of the comedy show but i was like on cloud nine just from getting myself to do something that i normally wouldn't have done and i knew that the future me in the casket on his or on his deathbed rather would look back on that moment proudly so this film this documentary stuts which again is available on netflix is Phil Stutz, you know, speaking about his life and how he developed his methods and style of therapy over the past four decades. And he breaks down these tools, like the one that I just mentioned, or like another one that I remembered being great that I completely forgot about, which again ties back to me wanting to like reread the book and revisit uh, some of these ideas. But this one called The Shadow that again paraphrasing pretty much breaks down as thinking of your shadow that's always with you as like the vulnerable 
little kid version of you. And whenever you are in a situation like for me, a situation that makes you nervous, um, doing something like public speaking, for example, he breaks down this tool, which is to use that shadow that again is like the vulnerable, scared kid version of you and do a bit of a role reversal and make the shadow proud of you and how you like live up to the moment of, and how like the shadow of the little kid version of you thinks of the adult version of itself in the future and how that adult version would confront the situation that you're nervous about etc and make that shadow proud of you and there's a bunch of other great advice like active love is another tool and the grateful flow loss processing all of which makes it a worthwhile watch and the book a worthwhile read and definitely a reread for me and what's cool is that you get to know more about him as well like the fact that now he has parkinson's you also delve into his whole backstory and childhood and upbringing and he had a brother that died when he was young he was just nine years old and his brother was three years old and how his family dealt with that situation and how that like traumatized him and i also found out that jonah hill's brother died and they didn't get into it too much during the the doc but i looked it up and his brother died of a blood clot and i think that getting to see all those humanizing vulnerable moments for both you know phil and and jonah definitely add something to the whole experience of, of watching this and the last thing i'll say is this line that really resonated with me i forget which one said it i believe it was it was phil in response to something that jonah was wrestling with but he says that failure weakness and vulnerability are a connector to the rest of the world let that one marinate in the old dome for a bit stutz s-t-u-t-z is available now streaming on netflix and the book again is called the tools written by phil stutz and barry michaels definitely check them both out